for the chin that's off to my eyes. Everything else looks fine to me. You need to get your eyes checked. Art tips from someone. Ah! All right, what's up guys? So we're gonna be looking at some TikTok art tips today and uh, it's been a while since I've done one of these. So I'm sure the crazy information out there has had a lot of time to propagate and reproduce and in infect the brains of our children. And we're in a different setting today because I walked into my office this morning butt naked and there was a man outside of my window cleaning the windows. I'm a little bit traumatized from that. So we're, <laughs> we're gonna be doing it here away from the windows. <laughs> okay, so let's do a TikTok. Let's see what we can find today. Okay, so this has been tagged art tips, but I feel like this is just a process video. What is this? Okay, so we're not off to a very good start today. Here's part two of me scamming people. I'm using this brush on Procreate that automatically finishes the art for me. Fit, fit finishes the art for you? <laughs> okay, I'm about to finish you. Wait, pause. You lost me like seven clicks ago. Okay. 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 Okay, so how long is this video? 50 seconds. I mean, based on this bear drawing, you look like a great artist. In those 50 seconds, you probably could have drawn that white outline by hand three times over. You probably could have had a family settled down in a house. You could have lived a really long and happy life together. Don't you guys just love it when someone's like, here's a shortcut, but it's actually the longest way around. This is what you should do if you ever have art block. First, scribble randomly with washable markers, and then add little droplets of water to mess it up and take it out of your control. Now free draw inspired by the marker without worrying about what it looks like. This will get you drawing and inside the creative spirit without getting inside your own head. That's a really cool drawing. Now, if you're the type of person who enjoys abstract art, which, <laughs> What's wrong with you? But I mean, if you're that type of person, this might be the exercise for you. But what's always worked for me personally is just taking a step back, just temporarily run away from your responsibilities, come back at a later time, and maybe then you're gonna be feeling a bit better about your work. Stop shading like this. Okay, so you know what? You're probably just a young kid trying your best online, but they, I'm not gonna hold back on you, yeah? No mercy for the kids. So the whole point of this video is saying that smaller shadows like this don't necessarily make the drawings more detailed, but the quality of your rendering has nothing, nothing to do with the size of your shadows. If there was a light source coming from right here, hitting my face, you're gonna see tiny shadows because most of my face is gonna be lit. Okay, all right. And if there was a light coming from that burb back there, because it's the light of my life, you're gonna get a rim light and a huge patch of shadow on the front of my face. So the size of the shadow has nothing to do with it. I think the point that you're actually trying to make is to be more confident with your shadows, okay? Instead of doing like tiny little pieces here and there, just because you're not sure where to put them, be more confident. Find your light source, find your goal, find your purpose in life, Find a woman, go touch grass. Have fun to your art style. My first tip is to go back to basics. Strengthening your understanding of things like shapes, color, and figures can help you stretch and break these rules later. Number two, give feedback on your work. Getting a second opinion from a credible source can help give you new ideas that can adjust your work that you may not have thought of before. Number three, is copy as much as possible. Just don't claim it as your own. Copying is a great way to experiment with different mediums, figure out what you like, and how to incorporate small aspects of different artists' work into your own. And try doing studies of work that you like and that you don't like so that you can get a better understanding of how you want your own style to look. I feel like I've heard all of these art tips before, but that's it's good because these are the right tips and they should be repeated over and over again so that the babies know what to do. Well, great video, 10 out of 10, you nailed it, have my like. If you're finding your art a little flat or unfinished, I have a couple of tips for you. So my first suggestion is to use a very directed light. Like you can see here, that light is coming directly above. That will help give the impression that it's a 3D object. Secondly, make sure you're using ambient lights. Right, so if you have your skin tone here, and your lighting here, and your subsurface scattering, and finally your ambient light will make things look nice and alive. Oh my god, guys, the window cleaning guy is back. Ah! Okay, so I love this video. I love the point that you raised about lighting. Too often, I see beginners just do this very soft, airbrushy kind of shading where it seems like there's 
no real direct light source. And the lack of confidence there, it really, really shows your airbrush is not going to hide that for you. Go find a lighting reference. Say there's like a cool rim lighting scenario. Take note of the colors, put it into your portrait. Who says you can? Who's ever going to find out? <laughs> Yep, this is why I always tell people that when you're working on a drawing, a painting, whatever you're doing, work from the big shapes down to the small details. If you start worrying too much about each individual hair strand and tiny little eyelashes right at the beginning of a drawing, chances are the end result is gonna look like somebody who got dropped as a baby. I broke digital art. I did it. This is a real time video of me just drawing over the sketch. Like I didn't even, I didn't even need to do anything. It's just a brush. <laughs> How is it this easy? How is it that easy? Um, this brush. That's kind of cool actually. Oh, wow. That's a very solid blending brush. I mean, you've pretty much got it all done. You're good. You just need the fundamentals of colors. You just need the fundamentals of lighting and maybe all the basic anatomy and muscle structure and bone structure of the human body and how to draw shapes in three-dimensional space, as well as some of the more advanced techniques like subsurface scattering, uh, use of ambient lighting, and you know, creating a composition that allows your eyes to flow throughout the painting and land at your focal point. But yeah, I mean, overall, the brush is great. And I think you've really got it. You're there, you're, you're there, you're, you're, you're it, you're him. Some people seem to be confused of the way I sketch. It's honestly the easiest way of sketching. I only simplified everything to geometry figures, using them as a guide I draw over. And it makes anatomy so easy. Now it's cool, but I can tell the anatomical structure is not entirely correct here. If you want to draw your characters anatomically correctly every single time, get a bunch of anatomy references and study those references. Listen to me, child. No amount of blobs or bobs is going to magically make you good at anatomy. A lot of practice. Why I hate check expert tips. This, I'm guessing, is showing how to correctly place the nose and the mouth in a specific angle, which is all well and good, but the wrong side. The face is just in a different angle than the first one, and the placement of the, the nose and the mouth are fine for this style of artwork. I feel like it's actually the chin that's off to my eyes. Everything else looks fine to me. You need to get your eyes checked. Okay, so first of all, it seems like a very minute thing, but you gotta bear with these guys a little bit. They're Japanese. Arigato gozaimasu. The problem with the one on the left is obviously the nose and the mouth are moved way in to the inside of the face. Do you have a mouth right here? I don't think so. If you're an artist, hold up. This is literally my favorite tip ever. So if your drawing isn't looking at all like your reference. Ooh, ooh, that's me. <laughs> that's my drawing. Hey, that's very nice of you to put the credit there. Thank you. So if your drawing isn't looking at all like your reference, here's what I do. Go ahead and add a new layer and then you're gonna trace your reference in white. This process really just defines those difficult features. Then using your new reference, go ahead and resketch. This is the original and this is how it turned out. Honestly, big improvement there and she's definitely got the right idea. If you're trying to study a reference, especially if it's the work of another artist who has a very distinct style, you might find it very difficult to imitate the shapes that they've created in their drawings. That's why the tracing is to really just get your hand to move in that motion, get your brain to start to understand how these shapes come together. And it's just gonna be that much easier for you to get a drawing that looks much more similar to your reference. They raise tuition? You're already paying 12K. The education system in North America is broken. Broken. This one's gonna be about life drawing. It's a strong observational skill to have. Use something that can't erase well, like colored pencil or pen. This will increase your line confidence and make it so you don't get stuck rendering the same thing, erasing, rendering it again. Just keep moving on, move on. Also find fun things to draw. This is my neighbor's house. It's much more exciting than an apple. Some of the additional challenges of drawing outside are drawing while standing, which is why I have a mystery mouse for tool. This is a portable stool I got on Amazon. And I sit down and I draw on it. That stool, I believe, holds up to 400 pounds. If you're drawing in public like at a museum, people will come up to you. Wear your headphones and wave them up. That's usually enough. 400 pounds! Do not be laughing about it. It's not always their choice to be 400 pounds. Sometimes it's due to the uh, corporate monopoly on the fast food market. But anyways, let's not get into that today. So this whole video is about life drawing, but it's, I guess it's, she's trying to say like drawing from life. Just get a sketchbook, get a pen, get your little stool that can hold 400 pounds and study and draw whatever you find to be interesting. It's a lot of fun. Very good job, jump scare person. Play with curves. Okay, that's how you're feeling, huh?
Great tips. You should be flipping your canvas throughout your entire painting so that you're not making any new mistakes and you can keep fixing the things that you're, you're getting wrong, which, you know, I'm pretty sure you're getting a lot of things wrong, not just in art, in your life as well, in your relationships, in your friendships, in your family life. And of course, the most important lesson of them all, play with curves. How I should skin oozing make it? Oozing make it? That's it. <laughs> I'm done with your video. Oh my God, it's the window man again. Okay, so the window man is gone. The sun is out. We're back. Hiding my watermark somewhere in my art. So please won't find it. Yeah, eh? <laughs> This is so okay. First of all, this completely defeats the purpose of a watermark. You want the watermark on your art to be visible and readable so that people can see it, read it, and look you up. And second of all, and this is addressed towards absolutely everybody, chill out a little bit. Let's just vibe, yeah? So many people are like, oh my god, I'm so scared to post my work online because thieves are gonna steal it, they're gonna use it for all kinds of different things. I'm gonna slap a huge watermark on it and make sure no one ever takes my work. It's gonna be mine and I'm gonna hunt down anybody who does. Like, come on, dude. You live in a world where there's billions of people online. There are gonna be bad actors. If someone does wanna steal your work, they're gonna find a way to get to it, okay? They're gonna erase your watermarks, they're gonna Photoshop it out. There's no point spending that time stressing about all that, okay? You're better off just putting your work out there and enjoying it and letting the people who actually support you and enjoy your work enjoy it with you everybody just chill out you know let's vibe <laughs> hey so here's some art advice as you watch me draw very badly in my sketchbook try to do some loose warm-up sketches before you go in on that super cool heavy detailed piece you're working on because my wrist was doing its own thing on this page right here good tip it's always good to warm up it's always good to get your wrist nice and loose so that you're not stiff when you're drawing a big piece that actually really matters to you and can i give you an art tip real quick Stop putting yourself down. Watch me draw really badly in my sketchbook. Why, why would you say that? Just say, watch me draw in my sketchbook. These are good drawings. All right, there we go, guys. Some TikTok art tips for you guys. But you know what, though? If you enjoy those videos, go give those creators some support. Go show them some love. You know, it's not easy to put yourself out there and put your videos and content out there. So props to you guys for propagating all this misinformation. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something new. If you didn't, hope you were entertained. With that being said, though, feel free to subscribe to my channel and go check out my Patreon for our new monthly tutorial in August, where we talk about gestures and poses and how to draw your characters in their full body glory without being scared that's pretty much it for this one i'll see you guys on the next video what do you guys think of this background pretty good eh okay hold up guys you know how me and this other youtuber kool-aid we have a ton of animosity we have a lot of beef we really don't like each other and i made a video a while ago about how you shouldn't trust kool-aid and she made one roasting me back guess what happened i tried to look up kool-aid on tiktok today because i was like you know what we could include a few of her art tips in this video and roast her <laughs> what? what happened account banned oh. oh man that's rough that's rough i mean i'm not laughing at your misfortune but that's really really rough I, it seems like the art gods were with me on this one <laughs> you got banned for what really banned for what for misinformation <laughs> anyways Colleen, hopefully you guys can figure this out hopefully you can get your account back and uh, hopefully you can get past 169,000 followers nice